Hi, everyone, and welcome back to JSA TV, where we are coming to you today live from the floor of Data Cloud Global Congress 2025 in beautiful Cannes, France. And we are joined by leaders across the digital infrastructure industry today who are telling us all sorts of news and innovation and trends that are impacting our industry. I'm Barb Mitchell, and I'm very pleased to be joined today by Atif Ansar, who's the executive chairman and co-founder for Foresight. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me here, Bob. Yeah, it's a it's a pleasure mm -hmm. to have you. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about um, you in a second, but if you wouldn't mind telling us uh, and our audience about Foresight. Absolutely. So my name is Atif. I wear two hats. I'm an academic at Oxford University, and I've done research there for well over 15 years. Um, and then I co-founded Foresight in 2018. Uh, schedule is king, and Foresight is a way of speeding up the process uh, of building data centers using AI. Um, so we use AI to help you build AI infrastructure, which is uh, fantastic. Right, and and so amazing. So you studied at Oxford and now you teach at Oxford and, and you of course have been really having a, a close up look at large scale projects in, in the data center space. Absolutely. And so can you talk about what you've observed over this time, the last you know decade or more, looking at this and and what's impacting some of the expectations versus results uh, as people deploy these projects? Absolutely. So look, it's no secret that data center industry is absolutely on fire. It's growing rapidly. It accounts for nearly ten percent of global construction volume. So definitely a boom industry uh, within the larger construction environment. But like all other big projects, data centers face the same issue of the initial expectations being too optimistic. And as a result, delays and cost overruns have become really common. And that's particularly true as the supply chains have become more and more constrained because everybody's building such large projects now uh, with density of racks going up, the size of projects has gone from an average of 20 megawatts to closer to 100 megawatts. So with all of that, the risk, the financial risk of these delays and budget overruns has accumulated. What my research has shown is that people really need to think very carefully about their optimism bias, which is a psychologist's way of talking about when reality uh, and uh, expectation diverge. Um, and what research showed was that even for very basic tasks, like going to grab a coffee, if I might, might say to you, Bob, hey, I'll be back from a coffee in five minutes, I'm very unlikely to be back in five minutes. I might be back in 10 minutes or 20 minutes. And in a data center environment, people promise 16 months, but they get 24 months or 32 months right. if they're very unlucky. Right. And these things are extremely costly, which our research is showing, which I'm happy to talk more about. Interesting. And and what do you see? Are there warning signs when these, you know, I, I love this concept, by the way, but how do people plan for this? What? How do they predict it? So that's a really good point. All projects are reported to be on track. So all projects look green on the outside. Right. Uh, but at least nine out of 10 projects become red right before a big milestone like weather tide or ready for service. We call this problem the watermelon problem. I've spoken about this before. Things look green on the outside, but they're oh, red on the inside or turning red on the inside. Okay. Yeah. So it becomes really difficult for leaders to separate watermelons from kiwis because it's unclear by looking at them or whether it's you know green on the outside and green on the inside or not. Um, so people need x-ray machines effectively right. to be able to x-ray through their project very quickly and be able to tell if it's got any warning signs. The single biggest warning sign of a project that has a lot of risk of going south is that the schedule is a mess or nobody can locate it. So right. if the CTO or the chief operating officer were to email the project team and say, hey, can I see your Primavera P6 schedule or Microsoft project schedule? they might get a, a kind of an alarm response back saying, right. why, do you, why do you want this? So that's first warning sign that there's uh, potentially more digging to do. Uh, a second warning sign is the reporting is very slow, partly because the data is such a mess and partly because the automation of that data as, as a result is quite poor, it takes people at least a week, two weeks, sometimes a whole month to report in real progress and if you observe how they're reporting, you'll see that they're painting pictures in Microsoft PowerPoint or using Excel. Right. So that's another telltale warning sign that there's quite a lot of mess. A third issue 
is that the communication between the top line and the front line becomes misaligned. Executives at the C-level in the data center sector are very busy. They're spending their time talking to investors, talking to their customers. They don't necessarily have time to look at the operation side of things internally. So they end up delegating the front line to go build the projects. But that delegation, unfortunately, doesn't work. You need to have governance. It's not a trust thing. It's about making sure that there's a loop of learning between the front line and the top line. So a third warning sign would be that the two are not talking or there's no business review, like a monthly or quarterly business review taking place. Yeah. And as a result, delays are accumulating without the executives getting involved and trying to solve them before the problems become too big. These are really important warning signs, I think. It's so thank you for laying that out so clearly. I, I mean, just from a cost perspective, it can have an, an enormous impact, right? And I know that you at Foresight have done some research on this with uh, STL partners. Uh, tell us about your findings in that research and just that the financial impacts of not catching those early warning signs. Absolutely. So we partner with STL Partners, a company based out of London, and we commissioned this piece of work as an independent research. So we did not influence their results. Obviously, as an academic, I was interested in both methodology as right. well as the academic rigor of it. So we interviewed and, and they interviewed as independent researchers over 15 senior executives as well as project directors across the data center industry. What they found is that for one month delay, of a 60 megawatt data center, the total cost to the owner is over $40 million per month. Wow, per month. Per month of delay. Wow. That's lost revenue, it's never gonna come back. Yeah. That's standing army costs of people you have to pay for. That's SLA penalties or service credits that you have to supply in lieu of opening the data center. Right. Cost of capital, cost of inflation, so on and so forth. And that's a very conservative estimate for a 60 megawatt data center. Uh, what they also found is a three month delay is enough to wipe out the net present value. So from wow. a private equity investor perspective, the return will get wiped out in just three months. So you have to take these delays extremely seriously right. and don't feel embarrassed about them. It happens to all teams, take them as a learning opportunity uh, and create a culture which almost celebrates surfacing bad news early rather yeah. than brushing things under the carpet. Yeah, so interesting and so important. And I can just, yeah, I mean, from a from an organization perspective, investor perspective, market perspective, all of these things, this is really important learning. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. Um, anything else, you, any final words? I know we're sort of day one here of the show. Do you have any exciting uh, things that you're most looking forward to for Absolutely. the remainder? So look, I've diagnosed a problem, which is this issue of the watermelons, right? Projects right. get reported as being green, but they turn red. So what I'd like to talk a little bit about is the, is the good news around what's the solution? Uh, and so these things are not as out of control as one might uh, fear. So you can gain control as a team. And uh, you know, I'd like to share three tips for that. Tip one is get your schedule in order. The schedule has to be a collaborative effort and it's, it's got to be exposed to sunlight. It's the best form of antiseptic. Right. Is yeah. for the executive as well as all the delivery partners, the contractors, the prime, the uh, uh, you know MEP contractors, everybody to have very clear visibility in a workshop, uh, for example. Then pair that human process with artificial intelligence technologies like Foresight to provide that rapid feedback and visibility, the simulation information to facilitate that better human communication. Ultimately, people build faster, but AI is the amplifier that can make right. that process a lot quicker. My third tip would be yeah. to put in place better governance. So sometimes the front line uh, shy from engaging with the bad news with the sea level uh, and just encouraging them not to do that. Uh, but equally, the top line uh, the C-level have to institute a monthly business review and making sure that they're getting truthful reports so they can help their team, support their teams. And the ultimate uh, kind of tip would be to really question greens but support reds. So it's the opposite of what people do. Right. If you see greens on your report, be very suspicious. Right. Why is it green? Is it really green? <laughs> is, is it really green? Yeah. And if you see reds, really throw all your support towards them and help them partly to build That's the a culture very good point. Yeah. of encourage them to come up with the reds earlier 
when when you collectively can do something about it. Right. It's not. There's no use having them on the inside where you can't see them. Exactly. Bring them into the light. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. This has been a very interesting conversation, and uh, I want to come audit one of your classes one With day. With pleasure. <laughs> thank you very much. And thank you to our viewers for tuning in again to JSA TV, where we'll continue to come to you live today from Data Cloud Global Congress. Until next time, stay tuned. Thank you.